pretty strong. But remember, we don't, you know you don't want to go uh, go off the deep end here. Uh, we have 60 percent of the population that is overweight or obese, and at the same time, we have all these ads for low-fat products and all this stuff from the government uh, telling you to eat the donuts in the office, and 40% of the population is not overweight. And that's just as important a uh, piece of information. We need to find out why they do okay on a diet that doesn't look good on, uh, on paper. So we, we don't really have the answers here. Our, the, the point of the society and what you need to help us with is we need to have a voice. You know, we're ready. We're ready to say we got it wrong. We exaggerated. Now, uh, you know, the lipophobes are uh, have given themselves the privilege of not responding to any uh, uh, any experimental evidence. I don't think we should do that. Yeah. Oh, first of all, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say what I was saying last time was that I think, and I don't know how. I guess my question is, how do you deal with this? Or how do we deal with this? Is that when you see a study that says the low-fat diet caused these benefits, and the low-carbohydrate diet caused these benefits, better benefits than the low-fat, but the low-fat diet caused these benefits, then you're saying that the benefits were caused by the reduction in fat. That's what people hear. When that's not the case. If you're eating 3,000 calories a day and you're eating 500 grams of carbohydrate and you go into a study and you reduce the calories to 15 or was it 1,400 in this study and you go from eating 500 grams of carbohydrate to 160 grams of carbohydrate, you, it's not that it's low, very low carbohydrate versus low fat anymore. Let, let me, let me very answer, low carbohydrate versus one, moderately. Let me answer the question in its uh, generality. We need good science. Now, my suggestion is that what we really need is uh, we need something like a court of law. We need a panel of uh, people who uh, don't have a stake in this, uh, but who understand science. We need a panel of physicists and meteorologists and archaeologists, and then we should make a case. Uh, we should be out there and say, uh, this is what we think, and uh, the uh, low-fat people can make their case, and then they can uh, decide. Would you care to speculate on what the... The, the panel that's now already convened to create the new 2010 Federal Dietary Guidelines for Americans, is it going to come up with this year? Yeah, it's going to come up with uh, the same old stuff. I think in a way the answer to some of these questions is that the reason we've gathered is to solicit your enthusiasm and come up with ideas as to how do you break through an uh, army that's much larger than us and that's well dependent. The question is, you know, we don't want frontal assaults. I mean, if you apply directly to a journal with this kind of information, what you get back is simply a uh, summary rejection. Well, they, they, or, or they, yeah, so the, the idea is like, if you, we need thoughts. We need really good thinking as to how do you actually get a, some kind of a flank attack on, on a very well defended Well, position. wait a minute, let me interrupt this. I don't really know how to do that. Well, so well, wait. That's part of the question. Let me interrupt you because what we need is uh, action. We, we don't. We don't need any ideas that you're not prepared to carry out yourself. Okay, uh, we get a lot of ideas, but we're a very small group. We don't have a, a large staff. Uh, yeah. I mean, it seems to me that the the sort of um, sacred cow we're up against is the idea of the balanced diet. Now, am I mistaken? Because I have not been able to find any scientific definition of a balanced diet. So far as I can tell, a balanced diet is um, eat pretty much the same things that your parents ate, your grandparents ate, your great grandparents ate, but not the things your distant ancestors, the hunter gatherers, ate. Uh, uh, is there any, I mean, uh, to me, the term balanced no, diet is so unscientific it makes me more cute. <laughs> and uh, well, I was and yet people say. hold it up as, oh, you're, you're, you're obviously I, crazy I, and we, moderate because you're not advocating a balanced diet. I, if, we, if we went back to. Uh, our grandparents' diet, we'd make a big, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we, the, the most important large-scale large, st large scale population study, uh, random controlled trial, is we put uh, 300 million people uh, on a diet where they were uh, advised to first eat a variety of foods but not too much. Then it was a crossover experiment. We switched them to a situation where the same hundred 
but millions of people were told to eat a low-fat diet and eat a lot, a lot of carbohydrate. And we can compare those two diets. It's the best random control uh, study ever done. And it's tabulated by the NHANES. That's, the, of course, the evolution of the obesity ever done. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just want to how difficult you can uh, make a database for those people who are on the carbohydrate diet. Is it costly to build a database? The reason I'm saying this is that I, I have been invited to different uh, forums, panels, you know, to contribute to my thought. And I found that uh, several people have been going on with their thoughts about how to be on this group. And so I thought if we can build up a database, just like uh, we I, have I, 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 da you, database. Are you volunteering to start? No, no, I don't know. I, well, I'm not. I, I hope you can help me to find out the way. Uh, let, me, let me tell you this. The reason is we have a database for uh, registered nurse nationwide. We have a database for physicians, too. So oftentimes, when you want to do some research, you can pull them out and make comparison. See, for example, I uh, sampling a lot of uh, articles, as you know. And uh, for example, this one, the doctor Singing Liu, he he produced data through the uh, national, I mean, the British nurse uh, database. They found some people who were taking low uh, glycemic index food and low glycemic load, who apparently have lower risk for cardiovascular disease. All right, but that's not enough. When they, if, if he use a database, well, I'm just suggesting, just suggesting, <coughs> then he can see very obvious, if you consume more carbohydrate, then the cardiovascular disease risk is way higher. Well, we, we, we'll have a sign-up sheet for those people who want to get involved in, in tabulating the database. It's, uh, it's work intensive. I can tell you uh, in terms of the uh, early attempts to find out who's out there. The Low Carbers Forum has 120,000 members. Uh, and I took a poll and got some of the ideas on what they're like and uh, uh, ideas that uh, they had. But it's, uh, and it was a kind of primitive study, but it was a lot of work. So anybody who wants to follow up on that can sign up. No, it, it's, uh, it's our problem. We, um, we're asking you to come out and uh, work on this because otherwise it can't be done. I mean, the, the American Diabetes Association uh, has a lot of people who uh, volunteer to do stuff, and uh, they're not doing a lot of good, but they are doing it. Okay, I, I'm uh, getting the hook. Okay. Dr. Feynman will be here all